So it's been a while since I worked with this board. I took a break and uh, since then I actually gotten uh, a little more equipment like this uh, Picoscope uh, oscilloscope module for a PC. So hopefully this can uh, make it easier to find out what's uh, wrong with this board. So the Picoscope is an oscilloscope that you connect to uh, your PC and uh, run the Picoscope 6 software and uh, yeah you have seen this uh, in use in a couple of other videos before this so I have actually been testing the RAM chips now uh, because I suspected maybe there was something wrong and uh, they actually all look fine they have activity on all the different uh, lines so uh, yeah that's good so my next step is to uh, check out the cpu and uh, see if there's any wrong with the signaling on uh, the different uh, address lines and data lines so here's the cpu and if this cpu is uh, processing uh, instructions uh, normally there should be a, a activity on all the data lines which are from pin 38 down to pin 31 so I'm just starting to uh, to measure uh, on those pins 38 yeah seems to be a good amount of activity there so let's check out um, the other data lines down this CPU and uh, yeah uh, 38 seems fine 37 yeah lots of activity 36 35 all right that seems a bit strange that's been uh, 34 so yeah pin 34 seems to be just floating below 2 volts and the next is fine so when checking the schematics uh, i see that uh, the data bus goes uh, into this uh, u12 then onto the set 80 so i'm gonna measure a little bit around there so u12 is this chip here and it is a multiplexer and uh, D4 on this chip is uh, pin 13 so uh, let's uh, probe that one yeah it shows exactly the same behavior uh, floating uh, below 2 volts so I'm actually starting to narrow it down now um, um, so I tested the, the data line 7 D7 on, on the data bus on several different chips and uh, for example uh, u13 uh, uh, does not have a uh, active data line 4 and uh, u5 which is the SID has an active data line which is okay uh, then this uh, CIA chip on this side uh, does not have a d4 active but the CIA on the other side uh, actually has it active on D4. So if I test for uh, continuity between uh, one of the CIA chips and uh, the C chip, you see they they are connected. And if I test uh, to the other CIA chip uh, down on this side, so there's actually no continuity on the, on the trace between the C chip and this CIA chip here. If I check the next data line, there actually is. So yeah, that narrows it down. Probably a broken trace on uh, this board. And uh, I suspect it's around here because uh, there was uh, some corrosion actually here. So, so I'll check this up very closely now. So I have measured a little bit around and my assumption is uh, actually correct right around here uh, there's uh, D4 going right down here and uh, onto this chip and uh, there is actually a broken trace between this point and this point 
And I just found the corresponding points on the back side. This is from the SID chip, and uh, this is the via going through to uh, the other side that I need to connect. All right, so uh, luckily uh, this is an easy fix. Uh, hopefully this will fix the board, uh, but there might be more issues. Uh, we will see. I just uh, solder in this uh, wire now. All right. Let me just uh, quickly check if I have a uh, continuity and uh, yeah. So this one, yeah, nice. Okay, exciting. Let's turn on and test. At least we should have uh, uh, some activity on uh, data line four now. So, but I'm testing. Hey, hey, <laughs> there is picture, fantastic. <laughs> Before I started, I took out this ROM chip because I wasn't really sure how to put it into the socket because it has uh, one pin extra, not one, but two. But uh, let me try and insert it from, um, yeah, like that. So turning on, hey! <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> that was it! <laughs> it's fixed! Oh no, I'm really happy. I, I, I've been struggling a lot with this and uh, finally just uh, having the oscilloscope helped me nail down the problem. So, amazing! Excellent! Uh, anyway, I still have some more work to do uh, before I declare this machine 100% and can start uh, assembling it again. Uh, so I'm gonna run a few more tests and then I think I'm gonna do recapping. So I had this board running for a couple of hours now and uh, no issues, nothing getting too hot. Uh, but now I'm gonna try the diagnostics cartridge. Um, I'm also going to insert uh, uh, the SID chip, which I pulled out before. So I actually realized that um, the diagnostics cartridge is for the C64 and this one boots up into C128 and I have no possibility to make it start in uh, C64 mode, but I'm trying the dead test cartridge instead. So there you go. This actually boots. A little bit uh, shabby picture quality when I am uh, filming the screen, but uh, yeah, that's how it is. So the RAM test is actually okay. I didn't hear anything for the sound test, so not sure about that yet. Oh my god, I actually inserted the SID chip uh, by one um, pin off the socket, so <laughs> hopefully it's not uh, gone by now. And there's actually the SID test. Yeah, sounds nice. So I'm just putting the board back into the case and I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, functional testing before I continue with uh, the restoration. Okay, so now it's not booting up. <laughs> Strange. Ah, I realize why it won't uh, boot up because it's uh, set to 80 column display. So turn that to 40 and uh, reset. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> and the keyboard works amazing. I'm almost not touching uh, the keys at all. 
uh, yeah, come on. Let's try a Go 64. Yes, I'm sure. Oh, look at that. That actually seems to have another font than the original C64. Maybe there is some uh, mod in this. I mean, that uh, ROM chip uh, I had out, it uh, looked a little bit uh, homemade. So the next thing I want to test is um, 80 color mode. And I have this uh, CGA to um, SCART adapter, which I uh, I recently featured in another video so let me just uh, insert uh, the adapter and uh amazing everything works that 80 color mode is just uh, fantastic But if you go 64 in 80 column mode, what happens then? Nothing. So the video is quite blurry coming from uh, the composite video out to uh, SCART um, and into my TV. It's uh, more blurry than uh, I'm used to. So this would uh, probably benefit from some uh, yeah, upgraded uh, TV modulator replacement or something like that. Next thing I want to test is some uh, I.O. devices and what better way than to use an original 1541 too. So let me take some uh, random uh, floppy disk here and insert. See what's on. It says device 9 on the drive so I have to load from that. Oops. Oh, I had shift lock. <laughs> yep, loading. This was actually uh, one of my favorite games from the back in the day. Oh, <laughs> man. So the machine is working just fine in uh, my eyes. And um, one thing I can't really test is the Z80 CPU as I don't have any CPM floppies or anything. Uh, Anyway, now I'm gonna do a little bit of more uh, of the restoration that's uh, left, like uh, this um, corrosion and things like that, and uh, yeah. So I've taken the board uh, out again, and I'm thinking about cleaning up some of the corrosion that's uh, around this area here. Um, I'll try to zoom in a bit. So there are a few uh, dark spots uh, here and there and uh, yeah I thought I'll gently scrape off the solder mask and uh, and remove the the green stuff the corrosion and uh, fix it there's also a few spots I uh, scraped off um, down the edge It's not uh, becoming pretty, but I think it's uh, better to get rid of the, the corrosion than uh, looking nice. Here's a spot too. Look how the corrosion has uh, discolored uh, the metal under the solder mask. Luckily, it's not uh, very deep. It's only yeah right under the surface of the solar mask 
I'm also using this uh, fiberglass pen just to to get away all the remaining shit. There's a few places on the back side of the board as well uh, where you can clearly see uh, corrosion like this one. So I think I got away most of the corrosion. Obviously not 100% because that's not possible. There are many small stains all over the place. But at least most of the bigger spots I have removed. And uh, I can actually feel uh, it feels like uh, acid. Uh, actually my my skin in, the, in my face is uh, starting to burn a little bit like uh, it's acid in the air. Anyway, now I take some vinegar and uh, apply onto the places where I have scraped just to neutralize it even more. I'm not really sure about the vinegar because uh, I heard people say that it's not good and some people use it a lot so I'm not really sure I'm using it. Alright I have applied the vinegar on both sides and I'm not sure how long it takes until it evaporates but uh, I'm gonna leave it on for a while now and then I'll clean it off. Alright I have uh, sprayed uh, with isopropanol and cleaned off all the vinegar and it's uh, dry because I did that yesterday and uh, now I'm gonna apply some uh, new solder mask and I got this um, solder mask ink green I'm gonna use this one so I just apply a little amount here and then I'm gonna spread it all over the board Uh, so why is this important? Well, it's because you want to cover up uh, the copper so that it uh, don't start uh, another corrosion process or get a lot of uh, oxidization. So that's why I just uh, spread a thin uh, layer uh, over the part where I have uh, scraped off uh, the old solder mask so this doesn't look too bad actually compared to the original uh, solder mask color all right i have applied the solder ink on every spot where i had visible copper and to um, Harden that ink you need some UV light. I have a UV light pen here and I'm just gonna shine onto this uh, This little spot here and uh, it should uh, harden So I just uh, shine the UV light for a couple of seconds actually and Yeah, it's already hard <laughs> Amazing so I think I had a little thick uh, layer some places. Uh, I should have used a fine uh, paintbrush or something, but uh, hey, this is what I have. All right, I think this is starting to be finished and uh, actually I'm ready to, um, yeah, complete this machine. Just uh, some more things left to do, like um, the metal case. So the metal cage or case is, uh, yeah, as you can see, quite uh, corroded. Some uh, white area around here and rust stains on both upper and uh, bottom uh, part. So I'm gonna use a steel brush on those. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go outside and do this job because it's a lot of uh, dust and shit I don't want inside. <laughs>
So I brushed off uh, most of the loose co uh, corrosion and now I'm gonna do what I, uh, I have done before with success. In my sink I have uh, just uh, water and then I add some uh, caustic soda which is this st stuff and it's the same as uh, lye. So I just add a good amount. Now this reacts with the water as you can see and it creates a basic solution that is uh, excellent for uh, stopping corrosion or uh, dissolving rust and things like that. This is very strong uh, stuff so uh, just uh, be careful and uh, not get anything in your eyes on, or on your skin. Then I leave the metal cases in the water for a while. I've taken out the metal and uh, let it uh, dry and uh, it looks very nice. Now the rust and everything is gone, just a little black stains uh, where the corrosion has happened. And now I'm gonna spray with a little WD-40. I just spray on this uh, cotton pad and uh, yeah just uh, wipe uh, the surface. This makes the surface uh, not so dry and uh, hopefully it protects a little bit against uh, more corrosion. So Time to do some uh, recapping and uh, there aren't many caps actually on this board. There are a few here over with um, these larger ones. Yeah, a couple of small here. So I actually found all the correct values. A couple of them a little higher voltage, but that's okay. So now I'm just powering on my desoldering station and getting ready for desoldering in this board. And a little cleaning of the mess, suck up the leftover solder. So this is uh, some liquid flux. That was a quick uh, recapping and uh, nice new caps. Uh, so let's test. All right, seems to work just fine. Excellent. Now I want to uh, replace the voltage regulator. This is a 12 volt uh, 7812 and uh, I got a 7812 uh, CV, which is rated for uh, 1.5 amps. So this should be good. screen I actually got a replacement uh, uh, Vic chip I'm gonna test let's see if that improves the picture 
no, not much. So uh, that's probably due to um, the modulator, perhaps. All right, I'm finishing up this machine. It's been a lot of work. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything uh, to improve the picture quality, not in this video anyway, but uh, maybe later, we'll see. So I'm gonna assemble the machine now and then um, perhaps uh, test a few games. A little fresh uh, thermal paste. Alright, the machine is finished, looking mighty good, I must admit. So that was a lot of work for a one C128. So I'm just running a little uh, dead test uh, diagnostics uh, cartridge and uh, see if anything changed. All right, time to test a few games and uh, starting with uh, Super Mario Bros, which works fine on the C128. Level one cleared. <laughs> so this is Boulder Dash. Uh, this is a game I really enjoyed back in the days, but I didn't uh, die that quickly back in the day. <laughs> Nineteen forty two. I didn't last long. <laughs> that's it for uh, this episode and uh, this series of uh, this uh, Commodore 128 from uh, trash to treasure so it was a lot of work but uh, I think it's worth it uh, now that you see the result and the uh, machine is uh, shiny and uh, fully operational again anyway thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, hope to see you soon bye bye